Hello, and welcome to our online service here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor, Ontario. We are so happy you could join us. My name is Judy Chandler, and I am delighted to be your host for today. All of our classes and services are made possible by your generous donations, and we thank you. This service today is about getting you ready to create your life. Let's begin with an opening prayer. As we get centered this morning, know that you have access to the ever-present God source, which is inherent in all things. Breathe into the understanding that you are one with a never-ending supply of good because you are one with this one power. Being conscious of this oneness allows you to create a great day. Step out in confidence and demonstrate that you are a perfect expression of God. And so it is. Amen. We are blessed to have Daniel name it as our guest singer today. Daniel is so gifted and his music so clearly expresses what's in his heart. Let's listen to Everything New. Bring it on Everything new Everything different Everything true I am ready For my next thing to do Oh, I know it's gonna be Everything new I'm through crying, I'm through waiting, I'm through hoping against all hope. I'm through longing for something gone that'll never return. Think I finally learned to bring. It's gonna be everything 
do. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel Namit, for bringing this song to us today. This song ties in so beautifully with Reverend David's talk, Creating Our Life. Bring it on. We are ready for everything new. Let's release the old and make room for a new creation. Thanks again, Daniel. At this time, let us take to heart our vision, mission, and statement of being, which is shown on the screen. We have a global vision, which is a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. We have a sacred mission, which is we inspire and empower spiritual growth to awaken us and transform the world. And we have a personal statement of being, which is, I am a dynamic center of the Christ light, mighty to unfold my good and radiate that good to all. Our affirmation for this month is, my imagination brings possibilities to life. Would you repeat that with me, please? My imagination brings possibilities to life. And so it is. Amen. And now, Reverend David will give us his message for today, Creating Our Life, after which he will lead us not only in a meditation, but in a prayer. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online service here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor. So glad to have you join us today. And as I always like to do, let's just take a moment and, and center ourselves. So take a couple of deep breaths. And as we take these deep breaths, we let ourselves relax. And as we take these breaths, we bring our attention to this present moment, to this place in time. So we relax and we open our hearts and we open our minds to, to the wisdom that spirit has to impart to us today. And then we allow ourselves to feel gratitude. Just pick one thing that you're really grateful for. And just hold that in your consciousness just for a little bit. I know I am grateful for each and every one of you out there that, that, that comes here and joins us each week. I'm grateful for your presence. So in this mode of gratitude, we say, thank you, loving spirit. And so it is. Amen. So my talk for this morning is creating our life. And as I was thinking about it and planning the talk, I, I, a joke came to mind and, uh, about creation. And so I've, been, I've had several people say, oh, we miss your jokes. Because when we were back in, in the chapel, I was always opening every talk with a joke. And so I guess I just got a little bit too serious with the pandemic and I let the jokes go. Well, after all, the jokes do take time and, and it's always sometimes, not always, but sometimes I have a little problem coming up with a new and fresh one. So, so it was just something extra to do. Anyway, I let the jokes go. But today I'm going to tell a joke. And, and it's about the little girl who comes to her mother and she asked how the human race came into being. Well, her mother tells a little girl the story of, of Adam and Eve and how God created Adam and Eve. And then Adam and Eve had children. And she said, that's how the, the human race came into being. Well, <clears throat> two days later, the little girl decided to ask her father the same question. And the father answered, uh, telling her all about evolution and how the human race evolved from monkeys. The confused little girl returned to her mother and said, Mom, how is it possible that you told me the human race was created by God and Dad said they developed from monkeys? The mother answered, Well, dear, 
It's very simple. I told you about my side of the family and your father told you about his. Our talk this month is, is uh, or our topic this month is about the power of imagination. Imagination is the ability to visualize and conceptualize and envision uh, to, uh, to, and to develop it. Like all of our powers, it's something that we have to use. And the more we use it, the more it is developed. This past Monday, I, I ran in a, into a condition that I seem to always be running into. I needed a talk for this Sunday and I didn't have one. You know, when I first started out in ministry, I had this sort of fear, this sort of dread that I'd have a writer's block, that, that I was going to have to have a talk every single Sunday. And it really was sort of causing me to be anxious. And so with that in mind uh, and not having a clear idea, I mean, I knew I was going to be talking in some way about imagination. So what I did is I just got up real early in the morning and I, I sat down in my favorite chair where I normally do my, my meditations and, and I just relaxed. I couple, took a couple of deep breaths and <sighs> opened myself up to, to inspiration, relaxing. And just as I did that, a book at the very top of my, my bookshelf here, just caught my attention. And for some reason, I was just totally compelled to have to go and pick up that book. So I picked it up. And it was, um, it was Ernest Holmes, uh, The Science of Mind. So I, I took it off the shelf and I, I opened it up. And as I opened it up, this sheet of paper, a half sheet, fell on the floor. And I picked it up and I read it. Oh, I read the first sentence. And this is what the sentence said. It was an excerpt from Seeds of Contemplation by Thomas Merton that had been typed up on this paper and somehow got into the Science of Mind book. And so I opened it up and the first sentence was, our vocation is not simply to be but to work together with God in the creation of our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. You know, after that, that, that sentence just grabbed me. And then I went ahead and read the whole half sheet of paper, but nothing spoke to me like that first sentence. Our vocation is not simply to be but to work together with God in the creation of our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. Our vocation, vocation. You know, a vocation can be a particular occupation or business or profession, but, it, but there's also a deeper meaning. It's actually more like a calling, a strong impulse or inclination to, to follow a particular activity or career. It's sometimes it's considered a divine call into, into God's service. Roger Eberts is the Department of Chair and Professor of Philosophy and Religion at the University of uh, uh, Dubuque, Dubuque uh, in Iowa. And I was searching around for information and I found a, 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 a reflection that he entitled, What is Vocation? And in it, he wrote, vocation is one's response to a call from beyond oneself to use one's strengths and gifts to make the world a better place through service, creativity, and leadership. The concept of vocation rests on the belief that life is not all about me. It's about more than me. To speak of vocation or calling is to suggest that my life is a response to something beyond myself. 
Our vocation is not simply to be, but to work together with God, with spirit, in the creation of our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. In another article that I read, uh, it came from the University of Pennsylvania. It was talking about creati creativity. And creativity is defined by, psych by psychological scientists as a generation of ideas or products that are both original and valuable. Creativity relies on imagination the conscious representation of what is not immediately present to the senses. And let me repeat part of that. Creativity is a generation of ideas or products that are both original and valuable. Creativity relies on imagination, the conscious representation of what is not immediately present to the senses. Here on earth, what would be more valuable than the life that we've been given? We are here to produce a life that is original, unique, one of a kind. We are in charge of creating our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. And the more authentic we can be, the more value we bring to all of life. Creation relies on imagination. We can change our reality by using our imagination to create new patterns of thinking. But I want to point out that imagination can also be used poorly. Uh, lazily in ways that are harmful and ineffective. Albert Einstein made the observation that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them. So many people are, are living unconsciously. They are running on autopilot, as I mentioned in, in my last talk, and they're they're running on the auto uh, pilot and, and, and imagine everything they don't want based on the past. They imagine things going bad in the future because of their past experiences and, and limiting beliefs. If you keep thinking about the past, you will keep creating it in the future. While we can use our imagination to create some totally new and wonderful uh, thing to come into being, we can also use it to scare us, to keep us stuck in the same old ways of thinking, to keep us from moving forward into the unknown, to keep us stuck in doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. We can use our imagination to create a prison that keeps us from fully living our life. Our vocation is not simply to be, but to work together with God, with spirit, in the creation of our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. We come into this world to create our own life, our own identity, our own destiny. But we must never forget that each of our lives are connected and, and shared with all of life. There is only one life, one presence, and one power manifesting infinite unique expressions of the one life, a life we all share. The life we experience here on earth is our creation, our identity, 
our destiny being shaped and brought into manifestation one thought, one choice, and one act at a time by countless individuals. Since the beginning of the, of the human race, we have been co-creators with spirit because we are spirit created in the image and likeness of God. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. We are the vessels through which spirit has created families, tribes, villages, cities, states, countries, kingdoms empires, and civilizations, all created out of the nothingness of a field of pure potential, a field of infinite possibilities, which is what spirit is. In spirit, all things are possible. With the creative use of our imagination, we grab hold of something totally new from this field of infinite possibilities. And we bring it into manifestation with the efforts we make, the risks we take, and the struggles we endure. But it does not last. This is the game called life on earth. Everything we create here on earth will sink back into the nothingness from which it came so that once again something new something better something more wonderful can come forth if you read the bible from the very beginning god is always creating something new and telling us to let go of the old and make room for the new over 2,700 years ago, Spirit spoke to the Hebrew prophet Isaiah, saying, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Spirit is always making something new to make room for the new we must let go of the old as we align our christ consciousness that part of us that knows the truth of our divinity of our oneness with spirit with each other with all of creation we come to know what the apostle paul was speaking of in second corinthians 517, where he sa says that if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. The new is here right now in each and every moment. It is coming into being in and through and as us as we awaken to the truth of who we are and surrender to that truth and live from that truth. To live from that truth demands close attention to reality at every moment and great fidelity to the spirit of truth which is in us as it reveals itself obscurely in the mystery of every new situation. Every moment brings a fresh start. It's its, it's own unique opportunities and, and challenges. Every moment invites us to use our imaginations and see a new heaven and a new earth, letting go of the old and working diligently with others in spirit to envision and bring into manifestation the world we have all dreamed of for so long. A world that works for all of us. A world of generosity, peace, love, justice, kindness, laughter, joy, compassion, happiness, wonder, and delight. It is our purpose to bring it forth in all of its glory. One thought one choice 
one action at a time. Today, I want to lead you not only in a meditation, but, but in a prayer. I want to take this opportunity, opportunity to, to teach you or remind you of the powerful spiritual tool that is at the heart of the unity movement. It is unity's five-step affirmative prayer process. It is actually the process I used as I prepared today's talk, and it, it is woven throughout my message. This past week, Unity uh, had their Unity uh, Worldwide Ministries had their 2021 uh, convention that I attended virtually and, and took some classes. And, and one of the classes that I took uh, was from Reverend Deanne Morency. Uh, in a workshop that she did entitled Welcome It All, Healing Limiting Beliefs with Integrative Affirmation Prayer. And in the class, she gave a handout entitled Affirmative Prayer for the 21st Century. I know Deanne because I worked with her in San Francisco when she was the associate minister there when I was doing my internship. Uh, just an absolutely love, lovely lady, and I absolutely love this class. In the, her handout, she, she, she takes our Unity five-step prayer process and, and, and really brings it, modernizes it, and I, I love the way that she did it. So how many times do we go into prayer because of a condition? that we are experiencing and, and want to change. As I noted earlier this past Monday, I ran into that condition that I seemed to always be running into of needing a talk that I wasn't quite, didn't quite have. And so again, you feel that anxiety, you feel that fear coming up and, and, and you remember the times when you did have writer's block and it's just so easy to get caught up into those thoughts. But then this is where we use our denials. And, and so when that, those thoughts came up, I used the, the, the denial that the, these thoughts of getting writer's block, these thoughts of fear had no power over me. I didn't deny the situation. I was feeling the anxiety and I let myself feel that anxiety. I let myself fear the possibility of a writer's block, but I affirmed or de I denied that it had any power over me. So once we do our little denials and just affirm that it has no power over us, then we can state an affirmation. So the purpose of the prayer, we state that. And we, we, we state the prayer by restating the condition as if it had already been changed to an, uh, has already been changed. And we change that to a, 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 a affirmation. And so in my case, my affirmation that I came up with, with is it is not I, but the spirit within me that does the work. The right and perfect message comes forth with ease and grace. So that is how I started. And the first step is to relax. That's the first step of our five-step prayer process, to relax and to just let go of all of those negative thoughts and to be open, make yourself open and receptive to spirit, to the guidance of spirit. And that's exactly what I did when I sat down in my favorite chair and let it all go, relaxing, inviting, knowing the presence of spirit with me. And once we've relaxed and opened to the guidance, to the wisdom of spirit. The second thing, the second step is concentration, attention or recognition. 
of the tr truth principles and divine ideas and powers which we wish to align ourselves with and, and, and activate in our lives. There's only one presence, one power in the universe and in my life. And so I realized as I sat there that all the guidance and all the wisdom I needed was right here, right now. Just like Jesus, Jesus said the words that I speak are not mine, but the Father within me that's speaking them. So I allowed myself to, to, to recognize that truth. That spirit, the spirit within was free. I was allowing spirit within to express all of the wisdom that it had within it. And then we go into our third step, meditation, integration. We go deeper into that center of peace and quiet that's within us. We, we invite the silence. We experience our oneness with spirit, with the divine principles and ideas that we've named and recognized as we sit in meditation. There is no separation. There is only one thing happening, and it is present as me. And our fourth step is realization. In her description of realization, Deanne says this. She says, I can, I have, I know what my divinity means in my life. We can claim, activate, affirm, accept, realize that the divine idea activated is already the truth of our life. Our understanding of who we are is changed, elevated, uplifted. New possibilities are available to us right now. For me, my realization was today's message, which came forth with ease and grace, and which I give you today. The fifth step of our five-step prayer, prayer process is thanksgiving, gratitude, appreciation that it's done. My consciousness has been changed. I am aligned with the truth of who I am. My prayer is answered. My talk has been written and now presented, I am grateful for the truth of the words that have come through me. I am grateful for the shift in my own consciousness. And so it is. Amen. Namaste. And thank you all for being here today. Have a wonderful day wonderful week. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul.
seeing life so clearly now. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Cause here I. Thank you, Reverend David, for reminding us about our vocation to work together with God to create our one-of-a-kind life, our destiny. Use your imagination. The new is here now. I especially liked entering into the five-step prayer process with Reverend David, which makes everything possible. When you do this process, you really feel a shift in consciousness. Thanks again, Daniel Namid, for permission to use this beautiful music video. Your music brings us right to our soul, where we know we are ready for a deeper love and a sweeter life as we move closer to our sacred source. Just beautiful. As we continue with our service, we want to thank all of you out there who continue to support this ministry with your time and generous donation of tithes and love offerings. Especially during these challenging times, we could not continue to provide our programs and services without your support. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It's easy to donate. We accept e-transfer or PayPal sent to unitycenterwindsor at gmail.com. You can also click the blue Donate button at the top of our website, which will take you to Canada Helps, a safe and secure site where you can make a one-time or recurring donation using a credit or debit card. Or you can send a check or money order to our office. For further information, visit our website at www.unityofwindsor.org. Again, Thank you and bless you for your loving and generous support. In these interesting times here at Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor, we are exploring different ways to provide more online services, classes, and opportunities to meet virtually. 
Information about all of our upcoming classes and events can be found on our website at www.unityofwindsor.org. If you do not receive our weekly newsletter, please contact us and we will add you to our email list. As we come near to the end of today's service, thank you again for joining us today. Let's open our hearts and minds in gratitude as we close by speaking out loud or silently to ourselves our love offering prayer followed by the prayer for protection. Divine love, in me and through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. The light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. The presence of God watches over us. I am presence. Wherever we are, God is. I am divine. We are grateful for Reverend David and his talk, Creating Our Life. And we are also grateful for today's musicians, Daniel Named and Mike Karloff, for our opening and closing music. Just a reminder, directly after the service today, we will have a congregational meeting. Our regularly scheduled Conversations with the Minister has been cancelled in order to have today's congregational meeting. All members of and those wishing to see Unity Spiritual Center of Windsor grow, prosper, evolve, and move forward this coming year, please join us directly after our service on Zoom using the same link used for Conversations with the Minister please go to our website for connection instructions. Also, please remember that members of our prayer chaplain team are available during the week to pray with you. Please email our office to request a prayer chaplain to contact you by telephone to arrange a convenient time to pray with you. Thanks for joining us today, and thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your continued support. Have a wonderful week, everyone.